let's start with the hype over that East Coast blizzard. And it's Snowpocalypse met Monday. Say it ain't snow. The second hashtag would be Snowmageddon. Are you ready for Snowmageddon? Burr, we're going to cuddle up with Chris. We call it Snowmageddon, Snowpocalypse, whatever. A blizzard, if you haven't heard by now, is coming this way. Sure, there were a few feet of snow predicted, and sure, the state and local governments set out to protect the people, urging them to stock up on supplies and issuing travel bans. And by late Monday night, the streets of New York City, like others in on the East Coast, emptied out. Well, kind of. I'm Don Lemon in the Blizzard Mobile, CNN's Blizzard Mobile, and we're out showing you what's happening in Manhattan live as it as it happens. I want to show you this. This emergency alert just came over uh, on the cell phone, and it says all non-emergency vehicles must be off all roads in NYC by 11 p.m. until further notice. Yes, irony of ironies. That CNN's Don Lemon in CNN's branded Blizzard Mobile driving through the streets of New York, telling people not to drive in the streets of New York because it's not legal. When health and safety is at risk, you really can't blame the mayors or the governors who issued these travel bans and shut down public transit, but the hype... Don Lemon, okay. I think we're going to have a weekly segment could from we, now on. We could on probably Don start Lemon, right? the weekly segment of Don Lemon Did What? It's almost his own parody of the parodies about him. It's just gotten to be that ridiculous. And CNN's coverage, at, like a lot of the cable coverage, they did air on the side of Armageddon, okay? Now, I have to tell you, I had a little bit more than passing interest in the story because my oldest daughter lives in Boston. Where some of the highest snow totals were. Right. But, you know, you wouldn't know that from watching them driving around the streets of New York where all of the media, you know, hub is. And so what I ended up doing actually was going to New England cable news on my laptop and beaming it to my television, watching it that way, because that's how I knew what was going on with my daughter, not watching this crazy cable coverage on, on the national networks. Yeah, it was it was sort of funny. I was flipping channels just to see what what uh, what everyone was doing because I knew we were going to be talking about it. And I, I clicked on the CNN just as they were talking about the Blizzardmobile, and I just... <laughs> Sorry, I still I was just laugh there every time about, I hear the words I watched it for about five minutes just to see how many times they were going to use Blizzard Mobile. And they used it over and over and over again. And it's like, but all it is is a vehicle that you're driving around in showing pictures of empty streets. You're not really giving any kind of information. And I think that's the thing that sort of sort of bothers me about this coverage is that it, it hypes it up to be a some sort of an event and it becomes a social event when in reality it's something that that you know people are, are living through this and it, it has a real big impact on their lives it's not just an entertainment kind of thing and I have to say I agree with a point I think you were making in your introduction to this whole story is that here are these government officials who have figured out you know how to deal as best they can with these sort of weather emergencies everybody's saying they didn't want to see what happened in Atlanta happen. Right. Ever again. So they're being responsible. They're getting people off the streets. And then here you have these these news cars driving around people out on the streets doing exactly what the government officials are telling them not to do. And for what? Well, we know what for. For a little bit of ratings, for a little bit of sizzle to try to distinguish themselves from everybody else. Well, and one of the things about the Blizzard Mobile that was really interesting, CNN has said that of its weather coverage, two of the most highest rated hours were when Don Lemon was driving around in circles in the snow. But it even got to the point where during the later part of that broadcast, they ran out of things to talk about with the snow and started talking about deflate gate started talking about non-weather related as they were stories. driving right around in the, the snow. car <laughs> <laughs> yeah but here you go if you don't want to see this ridiculous stuff don't watch yeah. this ridiculous stuff and they won't put it on the but air but here's the other thing that bothers me the day after you had a lot of news agencies questioning government officials about why they shut down New York City, why they shut down all these areas when they didn't get the snow totals that were predicted. And here's why I begin to have a problem. We've always said, even those of us in the news media have said that predicting the weather is difficult. You're, mm -hmm. It's not a precise science. So for us to come back and start questioning as if you guys didn't get it right, you should have got it right, yeah. is not something that you can, you can do after you've pretty much hyped it for the last 24 to 48 hours. And some of those city officials are looking to 
forecasts, yes, they're also looking at their, they have their own meteorologists looking at things, but they're heeding the advice as well from the news media. It's almost this vicious circle to come back and to criticize a mayor or a governor or an office of emergency management for doing that. And even if they're not following the advice of the meteorologists on the cable channels, they do have to worry about how the public is going to react when the cable channels and social media are piling up all these expectations about what you need to do. They can't just ignore it, even when their experts are telling them maybe you should. And I do like the way that the government officials did handle it. They say, look, we're going to err on the side of caution whenever this occurs, because if we don't do that and it, and the predictions do come true, then we aren't going to be prepared if we don't do these things ahead of time. And again, you find yourself in that same situation the city of Atlanta was last winter, where people were trapped on expressways or on different roads for hours or even close to a and day at a time. And that's very dangerous. So one interesting thing that came up, especially with how this story became national. And I know one of the things that bugged me a little bit, in addition to other people here, like if you were to walk outside in Columbia right now, we're pushing, what, close to 60 degrees. The East Coast media bias really shone through. And I want to ask you about the idea of this becoming the national story that it did when it affected pretty much nobody west of the Hudson River. I mean, it did affect millions and millions of people. But the, the problem is we have the technology now that we can cover this kind of story wherever it happens. And I guarantee you if there was a similar kind of situation anywhere between L.A. and New York, somewhere in flyover country, it would not get the same level of coverage, even though we have the ability to do it. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I saw one story mm -hmm. that actually talked about a contrast in what was happening on the East Coast and what was going on in the Midwest, the actual heat wave that, that was happening, and how is there some sort of correlation between what was going on there and what was going on what was going on here and, and, and where we are. and But the story didn't give enough of a context to even, even talk about it because it immediately went back to what was happening on the East Coast. Well, there's also a story I've included on our links blog just to kind of show a little bit of the differences in what happens when there's a major blizzard that brings this level of snow in what some would refer to as flyover country and a, a storm from about a year, year and a half ago where almost 20,000 cattle died in the Dakotas. And that storm got almost no attention right. compared to what we've seen in the last few days.